Well, it's the next morning, and uh, back to this 15. I was really surprised. I woke up this morning, and um, uh, granted, I got up a little late. I slept in a little bit because uh, I was still pretty tired from from all the driving on Sunday, and yesterday was a pretty busy day. Um, so yeah, I was pretty whooped. But I was shocked when I got up this morning and I saw the response to the video I put up last night about uh, cleaning and uh, freeing up this 15-91. Uh, um, I honestly did not expect anybody to really be interested, um, well, at least not to the degree that you guys seem to have been. So. I guess that kind of answers the question as to whether or not we're going to continue this project on video. Because, uh, as they say, back by popular demand, looks like we're going to do that. All right. I'm trying to get these pivot points cleaned up. Um, because if we're going to make this machine nice for Janice, we're going to make this machine nice for Janice. And, uh, one of the reasons why I really want this machine to be nice is I don't want to have to go, I don't want there to be any problems and then to have to go traveling to fix it. I mean, I like her and all, she's a nice lady, but it's also close to a two hour drive to get there from here and it's still in New Jersey. So, pull out some, I'm going to put a fresh, um, felt wheel on this, on this mandrel. And uh, we'll get some compound on here. I'm just getting these 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 uh, pivot points super super clean. Um, you don't want to have any friction or any unnecessary friction. I know I kind of drive that point home a lot, but I uh, I'm a firm believer in minimizing it. Now, I know that's going to be ballpark. I left a, I actually left a little schmoo on there so I know where this one was sitting. I'm going to get this one just snugged in a little bit. These other uh, points I've already cleaned off and cleaned off all the pivots on the rock shafts. Now, a couple things I want to mention. That I didn't mention in the video yesterday. If you're wondering why when I took the oscillating shaft out, why I took off the end here as opposed to taking it off here, it's because this bearing surface here is machined to a smaller outer diameter than this bearing surface. Well, actually, the, the, this the inner diameter of the bearing here is smaller than the inner diameter of the bearing here. So, seeing how this is larger, it will not pass through here. So you must, if you want to take this shaft off, you must take it off from this side. Alright, that's why I did that. Um, if you need to replace, if you have a bad driver and you need to replace it, um, you can do that just from one side, but it is far easier to take it off completely and press it out externally. Some of the replacement um, shuttle drivers don't pin in place. They come with set screws. So that's going to create timing issues that you'll have to deal with upon reassembly. So just so you're all aware of that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and back this back out again. These pivot points are all cleaned up. 
both on the shafts and um, on uh, the, the pivot, pivot screws themselves are nice and clean. So we're going to start the reassembly. This has got to come out by putting the feed dog rock shaft back in. And because I did not disturb this adjustment at all, it should go in quite easily because I just have to adjust for proper, well, I'm going to call it lack of slop on the other side. I never touched this screw. It was in good, assuming the adjustment was correct from the beginning, this should work out just fine. So just like you see me do a zillion times on other machines, see that's too tight, it's not moving. I back it off just a little bit, there we go. It's nice and free, but yet there's no side to side slop. So we'll take that and um, if I can find what I did with my wrench, I just had it, here it is, a few moments ago. I know my bench is a mess, I catch a lot of crap for it, Sorry, it's the way it is. And I will get this on here. And see how that's... Okay, that's good. No side-to-side -side slop. That is good. We'll put just a touch of oil down that hole there. And just a touch down there. Okay. While we've got this at this state, um, I want to talk about the uh, roller bearings that you'll find uh, actuating certain portions on these shafts. Like this particular roller bearing here, um, it, it goes from the lifter shaft to the feed dog rock shaft. And... Um, you'll want to make sure these are nice and clean as well. So I'm going to use, I'm going to buff this just to get the, the, the shoe completely off. Doesn't take much to clean it. There we go. And of course, the inside of the pivot points all got polished with cone-shaped hard uh, felt points. And this is all nice and smoothly operating. Okay. So that's good. All right, with, with that out, uh, I'm actually going to hold off putting on that shaft for a moment. I want to put the lifter shaft on next. Um, but to do so, yeah, okay, I'm going to put the lifter shaft in, and there we go, whoops, oh, get on there, you bloody... Actually, I have to back that point off a little bit because I can't get around it. There we go. So that's going in. I'm happy with that and we'll run in the screw. Once again, we want good free motion with no slop. And that we have achieved. And we'll take our 9 16th wrench. I'm going to hold the screw and use my 9 16th wrench to tighten the lock nut. We double check and that's working just fine. Okay. Okay, next victim that I'm going to put on. Actually, I want to clean this cam a little bit more. It'll just take a second with the 
with the rotary tool. I normally would take this to the buffing wheel. But it's a relatively easy job to do right at the bench. dirt. Okay. And we'll plop that in place. And I'm just going to push that right back up. Now in pushing that back on, i got to find the other pivot point here and just clean that just a touch. In one moment. It's always something I forget to do. In putting this back on, we're uh, going to have to be kind of careful here. There we go. I want to try to center this cam on the fork coming off of the uh, lifter shaft. Now, I'm going to tighten this pivot point on this end up first once I have it pretty much centered and then and only then I'm going to come back in on this side if I can get that screw to go in see oh god because you remember how locked up this machine was right of course you do. It was only last night. A lot of you only saw this a few hours late, you know, a few hours ago. All right, now that I've got that pivot point too tight, just a little too tight. So I'm going to loosen that just a little bit, right there. There we go. Nope, I still don't like that. That still feels a little tight to me. It's a balancing act sometimes. There we go. There we go. That's That feels good. Although, I want to move that down just a touch now. There we go. Let's get a little bit of oil on that. A little bit of oil on the bearing. The bearing surfaces. And that's going to be just fine. All right, next step, after I find out who's at my front door, is going to be to put in the shuttle driving shaft, the oscillating shaft. I'll be right back. And we are back. So, trauma at the front door is resolved. Let's go ahead and put this puppy back together. So, I'm going to slide this on in, and you get that shaft pretty much in place, and this is a little tricky to do. I'm going to get this, the bearing block inserted. loosen this up just a little bit. Here's something I had neglected to mention, neglected to think about. We got a clearance issue here between the arm, uh, the, the two arms. So I'm going to put this in so that the bearing block, now incident, incidentally the bearing block has a hole here for, so you can get oil in uh, to lubricate the um, the bearing block itself and there's also grooves machined on the either side of that block so that uh, oil will go between the block and the fork 
So what I like to do is I like to make sure that that uh, hole that allows you to get oil in is aimed towards the shaft. That way it'll retain more. And you just have to use your little needle oiler to get it in there. And we're going to line this up. And we're going to tappy tap. We have to do a little creative tapiology here. There we go. And lining up the hole. I know you can't see, but I'm working on aligning holes here through that. I'm going to take one of my wooden swabs and I'm just going to poke it all the way through. See, it's coming through the bottom. I don't know how well you can see that. It's going through. So, I know there was some question. I know Jen asked me if I was going to be able to save this pin. Here's the answer to your question, Jennifer. Why, yes, Jen. Pin has been saved. And we're going to take a punch. And we're going to give it a little tappy tap tap. And we're going to take it a little bit farther down. Right there. And now we're going to adjust this for clearance. And get it lubricated. Okay, that's good for clearance right there. In alignment. And we'll come back here and adjust this one again. All right, now we'll get some oil on all this mess. Get some oil on the bearing here, some oil in the bearing here, oil on the fork, oil there, and we have a set screw yet to put on. Believe it or not, guys, this is the hardest part of a 15, is doing this. And looky, 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 how quickly it went back together. Um, I could have put it all back together last night and gone through this, but honestly, I was just too bloody tired. All right, so that's moving nice. Oh, gosh, that's moving real nice. Janice is going to be so happy with this machine. That's moving nice. Bada bing, bada boom. I never did oil this, did I? I don't recall if I did. I'll just put another drop on. Drop there, drop there. Drop on that, drop there. Okay. Oh, God, that's so nice. All right. Success. All right, a couple other things that we have to do before we go too much further. Um, I'm going to need some to do some more hardware cleaning. I'm going to use a cone to get the inside of this bearing surface. I'm going to screw this back down. I'm going to use a large cylinder to clean the inside of this surface. I, I already, before I started videoing, I uh, put some um, croil on a scotch bright pad and I got the uh, the crank journal and the cam on the main shaft and I just got any leftover schmoo off of that I was thinking of powering this motor and uh, this machine up just to get the um, just to get the uh, moving parts freer but this is just fine so I'm gonna leave that alone um, but now that I've got this on what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this machine, and I should have done this before, but I'm going to take the machine off of the fixture, I'm going to take her outside, and I'm going to clean up the body of this. I'll take off this bobbin winder uh, tension first, and I'm going to remove this uh, the spool pin that goes down by the uh, bobbin winder. I'm going to pull that off because... Once again, I don't like the pressed in pins, and um, I'm going to go ahead and put a uh, 
I'm gonna I'm gonna tap that hole and thread it and put on threaded spool pins and um, cause that's just the way I do things but before I go any farther on this machine I'm going to take her outside clean her up a little bit uh, I don't want to get all that shooey stuff all over my shop my shop is messy enough without doing that so I'll be back in a few minutes with hopefully a shined up machine and yeah I know I should have done that before I put all these sha the shafting back in but I didn't so so sue me so anyway I will be right back and we're back I spent about 10 minutes outside uh, with a bottle of auto glim and uh, my small polisher and I got the worst of the crap off of it um, it's not perfect, but I got the worst off and I will go through and I will finish doing this uh, when I get done. What I am going to do though when I finish the machine, just as a finishing touch, this badge, uh, the badge doesn't look great. So I'm going to take some gold uh, testers plastic model paint. I'm going to very carefully go over this badge and just very carefully paint this badge with some gold testers enamel. Uh, and that'll make the badge look so much better. I do that quite a bit. People never notice the difference, but in this case, I'm going to do it. All right. So I'm happy with the way this bottom end is. Um, I'm not going to put the hook... Uh, the, the shuttle and hook and all that stuff, I'm not going to put that on just yet. That's going to have to be cleaned. Uh, but what I am going to do is, like I said, I'm going to go back through. There's some other parts that need to be cleaned properly. Uh, the feed fork needs to be cleaned. Like I said, the connecting rod, which is here somewhere on this mess of a bench. i got to get rid of some of this dead paper towel and dead, uh, dead uh, cotton swabs. Here it is. I'm going to get these all cleaned up and uh, get the rest of the feed mechanism cleaned. And then we're going to come back after I get... Oh, I'm also going to change out the wick on this connecting rod. This connecting rod oil wick is pretty fugly. Oh, see, it just came right out. So I'll put some new oil wick in there. And that's just the same firm felt cord that I use for oil wick on everything else. Just, I have it in different sizes. And then we'll come back and we'll put some more of this back together. We may or may not be on the fixture when we do that. So we'll be back. Okay, we are back. And we're going to do the next series of operations off of the fixture. Um, and uh, we're going to start out with putting in the connecting rod that... Uh, connects the main shaft to the lifter shaft. Now in order to do that, actually you know what I want to do first before I do that? These screws chowdered a little bit when I was taking that out so I'm going to take these screws over to the bench motor and I'm just going to clean those screw heads up. Be right back. I'm not even going to pause. I'll edit out the bench motor but I'm not going to pause. Okay. I am back and let me grab a small piece look at the connecting rod here I'm gonna take a small piece of felt felt cord cram that into the connecting rod cap and trim that flush so we now have a new oil wick here that was that easy and uh, we're going to get this oriented from down below. And I'm going to need my, you know, one of these, I'm going to have to make a new wooden block. This one is really getting funky. Okay, we're starting out. I've got a cleaned connecting rod. The pivot surfaces inside the taper are clean. The pivot screw is clean. Now, the on the uh, oscillating uh, shaft here, that is a threaded connection. 
So there's going to be a jam nut that's going to hold this in place. This is the connecting rod that controls the lifting of the feed dogs. So I'm going to slide this in and I'm kind of just going to hold it a little bit in place by hand when I get while I get this screw started. Actually, it's resting up where the um, stitch length regulator goes. And I'm just going to get this started and while I've got nice clean access, I'm going to put a drop of oil in there. Now, do not crank this screw tight. If you crank this screw tight, you're going to lock up everything. You want that, you don't even want that firm. You want that to be just making contact so that it takes out the slop, but it's still connected. All right, so like that, there's no shakiness to it, but yet it still pivots nicely. Uh, maybe a little bit tighter than that. There, so it's just making contact. Now, I'm going to take the lock screw, the lock nut, I should say, or the jamming nut. Technically, I guess it really is. It's a jam. I'm going to get that started. I'm holding that screw in place. I'm going to use a bigger screwdriver to hold that in place. There, i got a good size, good fitting screwdriver. Now I'm going to take my 7 16 inch wrench and without letting that screw turn, I'm going to tighten up that nut. We still have good motion here. Nope, that's too tight. I want to loosen that just a skosh. That pulled it in tighter. There we go. Once again, you have this is a bit of a dance. You got to get that so that when that locking nut goes tight, you can still pivot the connecting rod. And that's working and that's still working smoothly. Okay. Here's where the fun comes. Uh, let me take a quick peek inside. And All right, I can never remember, I have to look. Remember there's two sides on these, uh, on the connecting rods and the caps to match up. There's a side where it's smooth and there's a side where the ridge. In this particular case, the side that's smooth is gonna to go towards the ass end of the machine. So I'm simply going to, let me get lower the camera down so you can see what I just did. I'm bringing the, main shaft down, or bringing the, uh, turning the main shaft so that the journal is at the bottom. I'm going to put my smooth sides towards me, get the cap in place, and here's where the magic of screw holding tools comes in, really comes into play. And I'm going to go through this top hole And get the first screw started. I don't know how well you're seeing that. You can see in there you can see the screw is starting. Okay I got that so it's just starting to snug not tight obviously because this is a screw starter not a screwdriver and then I'm going to do the same thing lather rinse repeat on the other side actually I'm going to turn this so I can see what I'm doing so if I'm working blind, I'm going to drop that in, getting the screw started. All right, I don't know if I can lower this enough for you to be able to see this side with the screw gone in on that side. Okay. okay screws are in. All right, with that in, next up we're going to attack the stitch length regulator. We will put the uh, bearing back on the fork. Let's see, get the fork on the cam. 
I'm going to put the eccentric bolt through. No adjustment at this point in time. And just start the screw on there. We have the stitch length regulator mounting screw and its lock washer. See the bearing inside? I'm going to put a little drop of oil, a couple little drops of oil on the bearing. Now I'm going to put a little bit of oil in the slide of the bearing here because I can. And now from the back I'm going to hold that bearing still and I'm going to slide the bearing into the slot. Now I can look down from the top, align the hole in the casting with this hole. Let me put this back on. This is one of the easiest stitch length regulators to reassemble of all of the ones that Singer has made over the many many years. And then I'll take a uh, screw starter. Let's see. Actually, I'm going to grip this with a bigger screw starter than that. Oops, where's my bigger screw starter? Here it is. I'm going to grip this with a larger screw starter. And then down the top, get it going. It's going and get a beefier screwdriver and that will be this one and secure that. That's a little stiff but that's the way I like them so that they'll hold a little better and now we have a stitch length regulator in place. And it seems to be doing a job. Okay. I do believe in the um, description of the last video, the first video of this series, I mentioned I was going to try to spare you the agony of me cleaning parts. So I'm just going to go ahead. I've already cleaned the main portion of the race. I'm going to go ahead and reinstall this. It lined up. Come on, baby. There we go. Get that snugged up. Come on. There we go. There it's in. All right. Now she's sitting on her. She's sitting on her butt. Finally. Okay. So, what to do, what to do, what to do. Uh, I think our next step is going to be to go ahead and put the needle bar area together. Um, that way we can double check timing. Um, and once we do that, then we'll go ahead and we'll fiddle fart around with the, um, with the feed mechanism. So, once again, like I said, I'm just going to spare you parts cleaning. I'm going to go ahead, I'm pulling parts out of the bin now that need to be cleaned. And then I will go clean those parts and bring you back when we're ready. But um, more fun, travel, and excitement. Well, no travel on this one. More, more fun and adventures, how's that sound? Fun and adventure. Yay. Oh, knew there was another part here. Here we go. All right. Let me do this. Okay, when I was taking this machine apart, um, if you recall, when she was seized, the needle bar was in an upward position. So I couldn't get to this hole down here to get to the back of the uh, clamp on the needle bar. So... What to do, what to do, what to do, what to do. Well, my solution was, I got my impact gun out because it's these are awfully tight. I removed this stud from the cam. And what that allowed me to do was drop the connecting rod, which allowed the 
needle bar to rotate around and get into a position so everything is remova easily removable. So I just wanted to point out that that is always, always, always an option that you can do. Now before we put the needle bar in, you'll see that there's two, I don't know how well you can see here, I'm going to try to get this. Alright, you can see towards the top there's two engraved lines on the needle bar. Those are going to be our adjustment lines. We will see that in a few. Um, I just want to make sure that my needle bar is moving nicely through the bushings. And it is. That's going to move smoothly. Okay. So, we'll start by dropping the connecting rod back on... Actually, I'm going to lubricate that just a skosh. Because I can. And we've got a spot here to do it. Okay, yeah, no, no real mess. I'm just going to put a little drop of oil in there. Put my connecting rod back onto the stud. I'm going to back out the screw on the needle bar clamp. I'm just going to real quick check to make sure that that's clean, and it is. I went through all that earlier. And drop that in. I'm going to put a little bit of oil on that. And that is a bearing surface, so it gets a little bit of oil just for the initial initial reconnection. Now, there's this ground area on the needle bar. That's going to go towards the back of the box because that's what the screw is going to engage into. And we'll be adjusting. You'll, you'll see how, how much space there is. That's where we get our adjustment for needle bar height. So we'll get that on there. Get that into clamp if it wants to go. All right, we'll give her a tappy tap to get her moving. There she goes. She's she's moving. And we'll get that. So, yeah, she's pretty much lined up. And I'll get a screwdriver in through the back and I'm just going to snug up that screw for the moment. I'm not going to tighten it. Just going to snug it. that farther out than I thought I did. All right. And there we go. It's moving around nicely. Okay. So, next step, we'll put in, actually, I've got all these parts spewed out on the table here. Let me put some of these into my bin here. I'm going to hold out what I need next, which is going to be the lever that. So I'm going to put all these other parts back in here for the moment. Get this out of the way. We're going to swing this around. And hopefully you'll still be able to see well enough. Okay. I'm going to put the lifter lever back in. Or back on, I should say. The lifter lever also, the pin for the lifter lever has a flat, which corresponds with this flat here. So I'm going to back this set screw out. The screwdriver is actually a little large for that. I'll back that out. And that's in place. There we go. That's going to move real nice. Now, we're going to be putting in the thread take-up. I want a larger screw starter to hold this screw. I got my large screw starter. I'll get the thread take-up arm into the cam. And we'll just get that started. And we'll tighten her up. You'll see I'm getting all sorts of greasy fingerprints all over this machine while we're working on it. But now that's working just fine. Okay, let's go back to the nose. Let's get that back up. And, uh... <sighs> okay. We can put in the sliding block. 
drop down the presser bar. Once again, this is not being adjusted. It's just being installed loosely at the moment. Loosely positioned. We'll do the final position and installation once we uh, get our feed dogs, uh, once we do our timing, get our feed dogs and everything set. Now, the, uh, the washer that goes on top, I, I always raise that uh, the presser bar up when I'm doing it and then we'll put the adjuster on. And we will eventually put in new wicks in both the presser bar and in the needle bar. So there we go. That is back together. Um, as much as I despise the thought of putting this on. Actually, I'm going to clean this. I'll put this on later. It's a little rusty looking. All right. That's as far as I'm going to go on this at the moment. I've got some other things I've got to clean up. This shuttle mechanism here, the shuttle piece here, is pretty funky and gross. This has got to get cleaned. Likewise, I'm going to have to clean the bobbin case. Um, the needle bar clamp and a bunch of, excuse me, the needle clamp and a bunch of other small pieces. So that's as far as I'm going to take it for this video. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and we'll catch you on the next installment, and hopefully we'll be able to finish this puppy, or at least the mechanical portions, then we'll do the electrical portions. Thanks so much for watching.